Hey everybody and welcome back to my channel. It's Russell with Ink and Paper Blog. How are you doing today? I hope you are doing very, very well. I hope your Saturday has been fantastic and I hope you've gotten some reading in because you know that always makes the day a little better for us people of the booktube world, don't you think? Um, I am coming to you, if you can believe it, to wrap up the first part of my August reading. I cannot believe that really August 2018 is almost over. As I said in July, I'm going to be splitting up my wrap-ups moving forward because I want to spend a little bit more time on the books. And when I wrap up 10 or 11 or 12 books, I always find like I'm rushing because I don't want the videos to be too long. So I'm going to try to do them in two parts now moving forward and get to share a little bit more from, uh, with you about the books and uh, how I feel about them. So I hope that you guys like this sort of change on my channel. Um, so let's get started. I've read five books to start the month um, in this part of the wrap-up and it started with the novel Improvement by Joan Silber. This is out by Counterpoint Press and this book won the Penn Faulkner last year and the National Book Circles Critics Circle Award. I always uh, stumble over that award. And I don't think a whole lot of people actually have talked a lot about improvement, um, but I had seen the cover in the hardback edition and really wanted to read it and for some reason just never picked it up. And then I ran across the paperback version and I had to get it and I read it and it was way, way worth the wait. Now, this is sort of a set of interconnected short stories. So if you guys like that type of thing, this is the, a very, very good example. So basically the, I guess I'll say it's, it centers around two women. It centers around Raina, who is sort of our kickoff character. She starts the story and she is a single mother and she is sort of figuring out what she's going to do with her life. That's part of it. But the other person that is very much important and is kind of the background for all of the stories is Kiki, who is her aunt. Now, Kiki, we find out um, when she was younger, went to Istanbul and wound up staying there. She wound up meeting a, a man and getting married. And that man um, owned a carpet store in Istanbul and she helped with that. Then there was um, a natural disaster, a flood, and then she wound up moving to a farm and living with this man. And we find out that Kiki in that relationship didn't, didn't succeed and she comes back to America to her family with these amazing rugs. And that's sort of what connects. There's a lot of discussion about the rugs or some of the rugs that Kiki brings back. She gives one of those rugs to her niece, Raina, and it becomes, it's very important in uh, the overall arc. Um, but what's really cool is that Kiki will introduce you, no, yes, well, both of them, Kiki and Raina, they'll introduce you to characters in their parts of the story, and then we'll kind of go off for a little bit, and we'll learn about, for example, um, while Kiki's on the farm, there are these visitors who are these um, two uh, German men and a German woman who are going through Istanbul and the countryside, and they are collecting artifacts to take back to Germany and sell. And so what you learn is about how Kiki meets them, and then you get to follow them to Germany for a bit. And it's, it's just really, really well done. And then you have the modern time stuff with Reina and you, her boyfriend, and he is um, part of this scheme to go into one state and buy cigarettes and bring it into another state because of the taxes on cigarettes, which I didn't realize was really a thing, but it's really a thing. And um, the characters that are part of that circle, you get to go in there. And I don't want to ruin that because that's sort of the, I'll, I'll use the word caper part um, and the tragedy part. So I don't want to give you guys too much um, detail there, but it is so worth the read. I I just got absorbed in this novel, really well written, really well told. Um, I will say that some of the connections are maybe a little more strenuous than uh, the others, um, but it is definitely a book that I'm probably pretty sure a lot of people have not heard of and more people should be reading. So Improvement by Joan Silber, and she's prolific and I clearly need to go pick up more of her books. And this was out by Counterpoint and I just wanna say I loved it. Loved it, loved it, loved it. And I'm gonna say that as I go into a book that I'm gonna caveat that when I finished this novel, it skyrocketed into my top 
five books that I've ever read. Now, I know that as I talk about it, this book is not for everyone. But for me, it was darn near perfect. And that is Conversations with Friends by Sally Rooney. Now, this book came out last year, and Sally Rooney's current book, which is actually not even out, I think, um, is currently long-listed for the Man Booker Prize. And I buddy read this with Kendra Winchester over at Kendra Winchester, and you guys should all be subscribed to her, and if she ever lets you buddy read a book with her, you should, because she's so smart, and she does so much research, and she will blow your mind. I promise you she's phenomenal. Um, this is the story exactly as the title says. So we have two friends and um, they're college age girls and they do performance art. One of them writes poems and then they perform them together but one is clearly sort of the the artist um, in the language setting and then the other one is clearly a better performance artist. And they meet a woman who is a photographer, an older woman, and she wants to do a piece on them and their art. She invites them to her home and you meet her husband and then relationships ensue. Our main two characters, um, let me see if I can grab their names. Frances is our main female and Bobby is her friend that she does the performance art with. They are exes, they were a couple. And um, then there, there's sort of this there's like these weird relationships between all four of them and I don't want to give too much away, but it is about relationships. It's about friendship and um, lovers. It's also about um, communication, body communication, oral communication. It's about art. Um, the photographer has a very unique perspective, which I think is brilliantly done. Um, the poet also has a very interesting way of articulating. The husband of the photographer is a actor and he presents the world in his own manner and way. Um, and you, and what winds up happening, it's no spoiler, is that Francis and the husband wind up having an affair. And it's about that relationship and the layers in this group. Um, to me, I can see why this book may be considered a bit Marmite. The language is very it has its own style. And to me, it just worked. I thought it was brilliant on the page. And I just was so absorbed in who Sally Rooney was. And what's, so this book is set in Dublin. I should probably have said that a while ago. But in my head, it could have been any major city. The characters, the setting, the art, the conversations, the relationships. I was like, this book could have been New York. This book could have been San Francisco. This book could be Dublin. This book could be London. It could be, it's just so to me, universally perfect. Um, but it's got, I, it was funny. I heard someone say that they had heard that this book was millennial in tone. I definitely feel it has that sort of, um, that timber to it. But to me, I just think it's totally worth it. it. Not a lot happens in this book. It is literally about an affair, but it is brilliant. And I, I was blown away and I want to read Normal People, her new book, so bad. Um, and that is Conversations with Friends by Sally Rooney. And it's probably now in my top three favorite books I've ever read. There you go. Um, the next book I read, um, which was one of my books that I was like my top five books that I can't believe I haven't read already. And I am so glad I finally got to Circe by Madeline Miller. Now I loved Song of Achilles. So I was worried when I read Circe that it was going to be hard to, um, compete. And it wasn't because it's totally, totally different. Now you guys know Circe is a character um, in mythology, and she is in the Odyssey. Um, she and Odysseus have a relationship. Um, but that is just such a small piece of what Madeline Miller does in this book. She gives Circe an entire backstory. She gives her relationships and character building, and Circe turns into this independent woman who is going to do things that that cause her harm, but also cause her happiness. Um, I don't, it is like an adventure story, but it's also a Greek, it's like Greek mythology adventure story slash um, women's 
feminist tale. Like, there's so much good about this. Cersei is an amazing character, and she is so well flushed out. And um, the story is intriguing, and you get introduced to all these characters from mythology that you know, and Madeline Miller just has a way of just bringing you into this world. You feel like it's so relevant. Um, yeah, it's so good. So I highly recommend reading Song of Achilles, then reading Circe, and then reading everything that Madame Mil Madeline Miller puts out thereafter because she's freaking brilliant. And this book was just as amazing as I wanted it to be. So that is Circe by Madeline Miller. Then I had a slump, guys. I could not get into anything, as you may have known if you're watching my videos. Um, and I really didn't read anything for a while until I picked up a recommendation by my friend Chris, an epic fantasy called The Twelve Kings in Sharakai by Bradley P. Bole. Bole? I'm saying Bradley's name wrong, but I will tell you this. It fixed my problems. This is epic fantasy at its core, and it is brilliantly done. It is set in this town, um, Sharakai, um, which is in the middle of a desert. It's got this sort of Middle Eastern vibe to it. There's all of these nomadic tribes that live around and come in and go out. And there are 12 kings that rule this land. And our main character, I was calling her uh, Sita. I'm, I don't know if that's the intended pr pronunciation, but she's a young girl. Her mother, um, at the very beginning of the book, her mother um, is killed by one of the kings, kind of in a backstory, and um, she is on a mission to sort of avenge her mother. And the book just does such an amazing job of creating this world, creating the history, creating the mythology, also giving you adventure. The first few pages are so good. She um, decides, she is a fighter in sort of like a gladiator pit, and she kicks but and she is amazing and then you hear you kind of get the idea that she's has to hide who she is and then there's that intrigue and there's oh you guys you guys it's so good and you'll just get absorbed now my problem with every epic fantasy is that it's a little bit too long and i will say there was like a part in the middle that i was like okay i want it to kind of pick up but it didn't stop me from wanting to know what's going to happen to Sita. Uh, and I know that this there's three of these out. There's a fourth one coming, and I believe there's six total. Um, and I believe in the UK this is just called 12 Kings. Um, and if you really want much better reviews, please go find my friend Chris at Chris's Bookish Cauldron. He does way better epic fantasy reviews than I do, and he will sell you like he sold me on this book. But if you like epic fantasy or you just want to escape into a world that will be built with very little fanfare, but you'll be there and you won't get lost, but you have a strong female lead, highly recommend 12 Kings of um, Sherakai by Bradley P. Bole, as how as I'm going to say that. So, and I read on Twitter that he's actually in the middle of writing a middle grade book. So that's super exciting. Actually, I'm going to talk a lot about a lot of booktubers on this video because the last book I'm going to discuss is Transcription by Kate Atkinson, which I brought read with the phenomenal Simon of Savage Reads. And now this is Kate Atkinson's new novel. It comes out in the U.S. in September of 2018. So that is just right around the corner. And you guys, if you like Kate Atkinson, if you like World War II, and if you like female spies, this book is for you. I don't know, Chris of the Book Hoovers, if you um, watch my videos, you need to get this book on day one if you don't already have it, because it's right up your, your alley. Um, this is set in 1940. We meet 18-year-old Juliet Armstrong, who is sort of um, coerced into becoming part of a spy network. It starts with her basically um, in a room transcribing statements between fascists and a um, British operative and she's listening to recordings and then she winds up becoming a spy herself and infiltrating groups and what happens is there's three time periods. There is 1980. At the very start of the book she's hit by a car and we don't know why but we know whoever knows her knows her name. Whoever has her on the ground knows her name. Um, and then we are in 1950, where she works for the BBC in um, radio, and she is sort of a producer in that regard. And people from her spy past start to pop up. 
So good, right? And then in 1940, which is the next time period we go into, we get her how she became a spy and be part of that network. And then the story sort of unfolds. And here's what I'll say. The 1950 section, the first section, I was like, gosh, Simon, I think that this is going a little slow. And then I was, we were talking about it and I was like, but you've got to pay attention because Kate Atkinson is leaving you little Easter eggs that are so important in the 1940s and then through the rest of the book. And you guys will, as you start putting it all together in your head, you're gonna be like, oh my gosh, that was so important. And I, I, I didn't, re okay, I gotta flip back, read that section real quick. There are so many charismatic, amazing, um, different sp type of spies. You have like that gentleman who is sort of awkward and odd, but is clearly in the know. You have a woman who knits the whole time she's involved in her part. Um, you have the woman of the night who is seducing the men. You have Juliet who is just so real. And what I love about her is that she's 18 and she's fresh and it's 1940. So she's like almost virginal at points, but she's doing all this crazy, amazing stuff. Um, this book is worth every freaking page. Um, I, oh, I got my copy at Book Expo America. So thank you very much to Little Brown for giving me a copy. Um, and the young lady who snuck me the last copy that was available, I am ever in your debt. Um, and if you like Kate Atkinson, she will not let you down in this phenomenal 1940s, 1950s women's spy thriller transcription out in September in the US. I think it's out in September in the UK as well. Um, the UK cover has a flamingo on the, on, the tie, on the cover. So important that you know. Oh gosh, you guys, I can't wait. Read this. Email me, comment, talk to me about it. It is so good. So that is Kate Atkinson's, Atkinson's transcription. And I said that I was gonna make these videos shorter and there you go, five books took me over 17 minutes. I have read some great stuff in the month of August and I'm really glad that I am doing these in two parts. So, as always, if you are a return subscriber, thank you so very, very much. If you're new to my channel, thank you. I hope you like this video and you come back for more. And as always, until next time, happy reading and I'll talk to you soon. Bye!